Hi Professor, today's video log is regarding the federal government's influence on education and we were to pick one of the three articles listed under this assignment section. Uh, I chose the first article and that first article is the federal role in education so it's centered right around the topic at hand. I <clears throat> wanted to start by explaining what I found interesting and I referenced the text with this in partnership with the article itself. Uh, the text on page 380 has a graph that uh, shows the cost um, or dollar expenditure per pupil in the thousands. I thought it interesting with the current um, state control as far as funding goes and uh, how education is formed financially. Uh, I thought it interesting that it ranges anywhere from you know around five to six thousand dollars on average per pupil per state to seventeen upwards of seventeen thousand uh, dollars. So I have a couple issues that I take with that. The first is uh, in my district, CUNA, where my three children go, the expenditure is probably the lower average, part of the average in Idaho, uh, sitting around four thousand dollars. And the issue I take with that is I really feel like you know, I'm not given, or my children aren't given the same uh, opportunities as it relates to the cost and what it could afford them to have a lot more money put into their education, uh, whether it be teachers' salaries, uh, different uh, items that could be put in the classroom, uh, books, a lot of resources available to them. Um, they're not able to get as you compare them to the national average, uh, with Idaho being one of the lower states uh, in in the 50. So that's the first issue that I I had with the article, and I kind of started with explaining <laughs> the issue that I had. Uh, what I do agree with is I really feel like there should be a federal shift in and how education is funded to shore up the inconsistencies as it relates to what students have access to and what students get in regards to you know their economic status being able to get the same as uh, a student in District of Columbia right next to the White House who gets seventeen thousand dollars per student as it relates to the amount that's spent on them so uh, I do agree with that shift and I, I think um, it within the shift that's taken place and in, in, in the article where it referenced uh, the Obama administration uh, I don't necessarily see it moving to what I would necessarily like, um, but I like that there is a talk of a shift, and actually there is a shift in some to some extent. Where I struggle, and this is going to tie it back into the last thing we were asked to do, is really discuss ideas presented on how to help us in Idaho. I really think it comes down to reform, and you know, I voted no on propositions one, two, and three, and one of the most passionate areas of that policy that I uh, that I took issue with was around paper for performance. I feel like as an individual certainly hold me accountable and you know increase my pay based on my performance but don't do it when you're rating the whole school because I really feel like each individual is responsible for the individual. You uh, collectively should not be held accountable as it relates to your own personal pay. Uh, but I think that if we can shift our focus to federal funding, we certainly could increase the amount that teachers are getting paid in not only my district, but also in the state of Idaho. And education might have more of a priority on people's desks. Uh, so that's uh, my point of view. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark this video as personal just because of the couple of views that I have. But also, just to let you know, I appreciate everything that you're done to help me. Um, I have been feeling pretty sick and um, I was able to get out of bed today and get some assignments done. So I appreciate your patience with me and I hope you have a great week.